Well, hey everyone, this is Michael, and welcome to the LoveWorks Dreamers and Doers podcast. We are bringing you today episode number 45. And here's the thing, we know that you have lots of options to consider, great options, in fact, when it comes to the podcast universe. And so we are super ecstatic today that you chose ours. It's one that we created uh, last March back in 2020. And during the early stages of the pandemic, we wanted to create a great opportunity that we can continue to reach our students uh, through uh, our podcast. And so it's at LoveWorks So we believe that you are never too young to be a dreamer and that you are never too old to get started working on your dream. I love that, Michael. And our hope with dreamers and doers is that each week our special guest is going to connect with you wherever you find yourself today. And they're going to inspire you to become the best version of yourself for tomorrow. Absolutely. And in our previous 44 podcast interviews, there is one thing that each of our dreamers and doers, Carolyn, have had in common is that they have discovered in their own way a passion for personal growth. And at LoveWorks, we are super passionate. We believe that personal growth really can be a blast. And so we like to curate different ways, students, that you can grow in your leadership journey. And so we may talk about other podcasts on our podcast that we would recommend from books and other uh, great organizations that are doing really cool stuff. But today, Carolyn, uh, we thought that it would be a great fit to infuse a few inspiring quotes. Uh, we've mentioned this to our students over the years, but it's typically in the early start of the year, around that second or third week, that statistics say that a vast majority of us have either lost hope or given up on our new goal that we have set out for the year or even resolution. So Carolyn, if you are ready, could you give us a spark of motivation with one of your favorite quotes? Okay, yes. Um, and this is also coming from one of my favorite people. I think he has a lot of really fun quips, in fact. Um, but Robbie Novak, he's also known as Kid President. Um, and I think this is a really good one. He says, if you can't think of anything nice to say, you're not thinking hard enough. Uh, <laughs> I love how he says that in such a nice and cheeky way, but he it's right. Like if you can't think of anything nice to say, you're probably not thinking hard enough. And in fact, um, to look for connect points with people. Um, I think that's a really good one. Um, so yeah, Michael, what about you? I love KP. KP is awesome. Drop it in the chat box if you have watched a kid president video. I'm definitely raising my hand over here. Uh, one of my favorite quotes is someone that I'm actually trying to learn more about. So I hope she was the one who originally said this, but it's so good, a little lengthy, but students, those of you that are listening, watching, hang in there for just a second. So it's by Daisy Rein Reinhardt. And she says that I'm tired of sailing my little boat far inside the harbor bar, but I want to be out where the big ships float out in the deep where the great ones are and should my frail craft prove too slight for storms that sweep these wet wide seas or better go down in the stirring fight than drowse to death by the sheltering shore. Uh, I, I love that thought about just not staying where it's safe uh, in the in the harbor, but ships are meant to sail. So this has inspired me to think about I would rather go down in a stirring fight down in the water, you know, than just be hanging out, sitting on a dock uh, and looking out where, where uh, you know, my dreams are, 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 are at and where they're leading me. So I love, I love that one. Do you have another one, Carolyn? I do. That reminds me a lot of a, um, it's a Theodore Roosevelt, uh, Teddy Roosevelt quote called Man in the Arena. Very similar. He's talking about, you know, the, the, the winner, the true winner um, is not the person who's, you know, in the sidelines watching the match go on, but it's the person who's actually in the battle. And it's not about whether they win or not. It's the fact that they got in there and they did the work. Um, and they're not just someone who's commenting on the side, not just watching and rooting, but they're the ones that are actually doing the hard work. Um, mm. And so I love I love this quote just because it encourages you. Like, it's not about winning or failing, whatever it is. It's the fact that you got in there and you did it. Carolyn, you're going to make me stand up from my, from my chair right now that, I, that I'm <laughs> here. I love it. How about one more? And we're going to leave this author for a moment unknown. But here's the quote. I think it's so good. And students and listeners, watchers, watchers, wherever you are at right now, when you think about your dream, think about your goal, 
uh, be reminded of this quote right here. This would be a great one to put on the backdrop of your phone or grab the lipstick, put on the mirror in your bathroom. But here's the quote. Don't be discouraged by life's little stings, but get back up and spread your wings. If you have a favorite quote, please drop that in the chat box. We'd love to be inspired by it. That's a perfect time for our roll call as well. So this is a time where we love to see who is out there, students. So if you're out there, go ahead, drop an emoji. Um, but we have a fun a question for you today. Um, and it does have to do with our guest speaker. So if you've ever been stung by a bee, drop a bee emoji in the chat right now. If you've never been stung by a bee, go ahead and just put a little yellow heart. Maybe the, maybe the bees love you. <laughs> <laughs> Here's, My here's, phone, you've ever been stung? <laughs> here's what I'll say to that. Yes, and I still love the bees. I, I think I was age maybe eight or nine, grew up out in the country in Michigan, and I looked for a, a ball in a place where I probably shouldn't, and there were multiple bees, and there was a beehive, and I started running and into my house and, and all that good stuff. But again, good news. I still love the bees. That's good. Michael, I have, uh, I've lived without being stung by a bee. I've had bees land on me, interact with me, but so far so good. <laughs> Be kind, I guess. <laughs> I love it, I love it. Well, dreamers and doers, I know that you're probably ready for us to transition in today's special interview. We always like to remind you just about our format of dreamers and doers. Uh, since the month of March of last year, we've had an opportunity each week to be able to sit down with a special guest uh, who takes some time to be able to share at least one of their dream stories. And they don't just stop there with the dream and what they're doing today, but we also like to just go back and heard about what were some of those first initial steps, perhaps challenges, adversity they faced uh, to get there. And so it's our hope that after you hear the story, uh, perhaps, you know, hear about some of those first steps and challenges that you're thinking to yourself, hey, if she can do it, if he can do it, that I can definitely do something. So that's our hope that you are inspired, encouraged and motivated uh, to get from where you are today to the place that you want to tomorrow. And to warm you up for today's interview, we have a trivia question and a chance for you to win a prize. So that means the first person that gives us the correct answer in the comments will get a prize mail directly to their house this week. So the question is, how much honey does one bee produce in her lifetime? How much honey does one bee produce in her lifetime? When I learned this fact, this was a game changer. So uh, drop that in the chat box. The first maybe one or two, who knows, let's be generous today. And maybe even three people that guess correctly. Who knows what you're going to get mailed to you directly. It could be a special book. It could be some lemonade. But we know it is going to be awesome. Carolyn, our podcast has not been around for five years. But I feel like we've been waiting five years to talk to today's guest. Let's meet her. Her name is Michaela Ulmer. Michaela Ulmer is a social entrepreneur. She's a bee ambassador, author, educator, and student. She's the founder of Me and the Bees Lemonade. It's a multi-million dollar bottled lemonade company that makes contributions to the Healthy Hive Foundation, which is a nonprofit that helps the mission of saving the pollinators. By the age of 16, she has won Teenpreneur of the Year, introduced former President Barack Obama. She's been a panelist at South by Southwest, and she just released her first book this last year called Be Fearless. In fact, I've got it right here. Oh, I'm late to the party. Here's mine. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Let's bring in Michaela. Hi, Michaela. Hi, Michaela. Okay, there you go. Hi, everyone. Ah, oh, so Hi. great to hear your voice. I hope you heard our, our opening remarks though, but seriously, we were talking about this just before uh, we went live. Michaela, we've been really waiting and we've been telling your story for five years. We've been purchasing multiple bottles of lemonade for five years, <laughs> giving to the students. So thank you so much for carving out the time today. No, thank you guys. That was such a fun intro. I literally had to think about like, is it a fourth a teaspoon? I had to remember exactly how much, but thanks. It was a fun trivia, great intro, and hi, doers and doers. I am so excited to be talking to you guys today. Yeah. Well, Michaela, we love to just jump off into this question. You even called them just the dreamers and the doers. And so, you know, we we, we consider you already one of both, right? You're, you're already a dreamer, you're already a doer, but what do you feel like you consider yourself more naturally? 
Uh, that's a good question. I think I consider myself more naturally a dreamer. Like I can brainstorm. I'll use some good music and I can brainstorm so many things. I love thinking of different possibilities and I kind of just chart different paths in my mind. So I'm definitely naturally a great dreamer. It's figuring out what what, which of those dreams is actually worth pursuing or which ones am I most interested in? Like I literally have different projects or business ideas that I have to put on hold because I'm like, okay, I have school and I have me and the bees and I have sports. Like I don't want to stretch myself too thin. So I'm definitely a dreamer. And um, and the dreams that I really am passionate about, those are the ones that I do. I love that. Well, we're we're going to get to some of those dreams and that part of what you're doing. And so we're going to talk about the Healthy High Foundation. Of course, we're going to get into Be Fearless. We're going to talk Lemonade. So many just cool things. It blows my mind today when I was thinking about that you have been running your business now for 10 years and it started yeah. at the age of six. So if you don't mind, could you take us back just a few years and can you paint a picture for us of what it was like growing up? Yes. And, you know, I have one small correction. I, re I remember doing when I did presentations or workshops, especially when I did them to adults, I would say even when I was around 10, like I have been doing this business for over half of my lifetime. <laughs> I would always laugh. So I started Me and the Bees and the idea of the Donate Sin when I was actually four and a half years old. And I I stand corrected. <laughs> years younger. Um, I, there was a toy that my cousin had that I wanted. And uh, my parents said, okay, you can either, we're not gonna just get it for you. You can either do some more chores around the house or you can do some research about, or not do research, or you can find another way to earn money. So like you wanna do chores or find another way to earn money. And so at my kindergarten, they were having these signs for business fairs. I didn't know exactly what they were, but um, after asking my mom and clarifying that they weren't actually like carnival fairs, I learned that they're to, to uh, like come up with a business idea. It's, it's an opportunity for kids to come up with a business idea and sell their product for a day without needing a permit or anything. And that sounded awesome because they gave you they gave me the resources that I needed to come up with my idea um, and also the spots like I could sell to people who were already there. And so I had the summer to think of a product that I wanted to create and sell, and over two. I think around I think a couple weeks into the summer, one thing happened. I got stung by two bees in one week. That was absolutely terrifying. So if anyone put a bee in the chat, I would also be putting a bee in the chat because I got stung once in my ear, once on my neck, and that was so painful. And I became terrified of bees after that. I was pretty traumatized, and I just didn't want to have anything to do with the bees after that. Um, and then I think my parents encouraged me to do some research. And doing that research, it was through picture books, it was through animated videos. I ended up learning how important pollinators are and that we rely on them for a lot of the foods we eat and that they're dying at an alarming rate. And so I decided to just take this newfound information about the bees and say, whatever I'm doing for this fair or for the lemonade day, I wanted to help save the bees. And another thing that happened that summer, I'm trying to figure out exactly what I was going to do. I got a couple from my great granny Helen for black seed lemonade, which is a healthy seed. And I just didn't really think to combine it with lemonade, but it tasted really good. And so I think I was just like, okay, I'm going to take this flax lemonade recipe from my great granny Helen from the 1940s. I'm going to do it with me, which I just learned that the bees made. And I'm going to donate a portion of what I made to organizations that were helping the bees in Austin. And then I'm going to make like some money that I thought I can get this all. So a bunch of things going on in my four-year-old mind. But if, 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 ultimately, I just wanted to do a lemonade stand and I was going to dress up in a bee suit and help save the bees. Wow. So four and a half years old in this faraway land in Austin, Texas. Uh, was, the, was the business fair the Acton Business Fair by, by chance, Michaela? Yes, it was the Acton Business Fair and then also the Lemonade Day, uh, um, National Lemonade Day organization so there were two different ones and that's a i mean that's a great question because over the, the next couple of years i would sell maybe two three times a year just for fun and sometimes if there was um one of my friends had a a diner so i would ask her parents if i could set up my lemonade stand sometimes there was an event or like a fair um and we could buy a booth and sell 
and if I had enough money saved over from the past stamps, I could buy booths and sell at those fairs. So I just sold a couple times a year, but every single time I sold out and it didn't matter how many limits I squeezed, I sold out. So I was wow. kind of thinking of more ways that I could save the bees or at least save them year round instead of just having to do it a couple times at the stand. Michaela, we're, we're gonna transition in just a minute, but let's park here for a second. So you mentioned brother, you're given some choices and some options, and then you've got like mom and dad. So where are they all at in the middle of all this in Michaela's, in Michaela's world? So I think we from the beginning, we had little roles, but my younger brother, I call him my number one sales rep because he was standing at the front of the stand yelling lemonade anyone at the top of his lungs. Like this was good advertisement. He was really loud. Um, my mom had her own marketing firm. So while so while she was running her marketing firm, she would help me like it was her idea to dress me up in the bee suit. It was probably for cute pictures, but also because of marketing. And she helped me come up with a logo, which was clip art in the name Bee Suite. And she helped me like lay out my stand. My dad does operations and finance. So he helped me like make a budget and as, as well as the materials that the fair gave me. So he kind of helped walk me through that. But um, since since that day, since starting in the first fairs, even it was still me who had to, you know, go out and sell my product. Like I can't just rely on my parents to sell my product. I have to exchange the money. I have to count. I had to count and figure out, okay, how much change do you get? I got to go make recipes in the kitchen. But it, my parents were very helpful in pretty much a lot, giving me the push and the confidence that I needed to start me and start me at these and start this on Yeah. I love that. It reminds me, I mean, it's from your book, but the whole hive mentality, of course, as well. Um, and I love the, the way that your story transitions, right? It starts with kind of a fear and unknown, which then leads to education and then finding out like there's a big problem here and I can do something about it. And so it's like you see that big dreamer, of course, but then you actually go and you you do something. Um, and I, You know, it starts small at first. At what point do you feel like it started to get serious and you were like, OK, this is starting to get really big? That's a, such a good question, because I think there are multiple little steps. I think one was when I started doing workshops. So um, I would I was selling out at stands. I wanted to save the bees more. So I, when I was around eight, I would teach other kids while their parents were shopping. I would teach in front of like Whole Foods or pizza shops and um, have the kids plant a bee friendly flower. They were my age. I don't know why I keep calling them kids. Have them plant bee friendly flowers and teach them some cool new bee facts that I learned. It was a little nerve wracking at first because it was like they they're older than me or they're my age. They already know all of this, but. It turns out that they were learning a lot too and were really excited about the bees. And so I remember after doing one at a pizza shop in Austin, Texas, the owner said, hey, if you can find a way to bottle your product, we'll carry it in our store. So that was a moment when I realized, hey, this could be more than a lemonade stand. And we started asking questions to other uh, local entrepreneurs in Austin. We started going to different stores and asking people who work there, hey, what bottles stand out to you or what bottles do well? And we just started a commercial kitchen. So I think that was one of the points when I was around eight where um, <laughs> I started to realize that this could be more than a business. And then of course, Shark Tank, which is, I mean, that was a moment where I realized, okay, not only do people want to buy it, but also investors want to join and partner with me. So that was also a breakthrough moment in growing the company too. Wow, at age of eight, you're already using words like investor and partners <laughs> and shark. <laughs> so, so Michaela, I gotta, I've gotta ask you, you know, and, and it could be at age eight or it might even be, you know, something recent maybe that you've, you've walked through. I know that a lot of our students, I mean, I, I couldn't be more encouraged right now getting an opportunity to work with this generation of students with their zeal, with their enthusiasm, and they definitely don't have a shortage of ideas. But um, but with ideas and getting started often come with, with it some challenge and some hard times. And so I'm just curious, were there any times for you, you know, that you wanted to give up during this journey? And if so, how did you find yourself persevering? That's, that's a good one. And there are multiple. I think the one that I want to share because it's probably 
I'll share a couple, but the one I want to share is probably the most relatable. It wasn't with the business side of it. It was actually with school. Mm. And it was when, I mean, I, I definitely was not a perfect student and still not now, but I was at a time where I was just thinking like, why am I learning this? I don't want to do this. I'm never going to use this. What do I need to solve for X, da, 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 da. And um, I think I was just becoming really discouraged in doing schoolwork. I was just tired. I didn't feel like doing it. And so, um, I think one thing that I realized, and my, I think my parents helped teach me, and then also when I was at doing a stand one day, I realized that, hey, like, the skills that I'm learning in math, I'm actually using in the stand, so maybe I'll, like, pay more attention in that class. Or I remember when giving a presentation and having to do, like, the same kind of editing skills that I would have to do on my book reports, and I was like, okay, this the skill that I'm using in English, I'm actually using for this workshop presentation. And then I remember trying to fix a recipe. We had to fix a recipe because like the ingredients were off and we were getting a lot of people saying like, hey, this is too sour. And then we started in the kitchen doing measurements and finding out which ingredients, like which ingredient was overpowered the other. And then I was like, the skills that I'm using in science, I'm actually using like when coming up with the lemonade recipe. So that was a challenge was just make i guess being less dedicated and doing this work and then realizing actually i really am using this for business mm -hmm. and it got me definitely back interested and invested in like getting good grades and continuing to learn in school and then i think the ne another one was just having to change the name in 2016. there was a company that had a name similar to ours and they said either you can pay a lot of money like i think it was over a million dollars a lot of money to borrow the name b suite or you can change it all together. And if you saw the Shark Tank episode, the name was B Suite instead of Name Bees. And the name did change. We changed it because we realized like there's already B Suite snacks and B Suite like skincare. And I wanted to do those kinds of products. And so changing the name allowed me to grow and um, also better represent the mission. So we changed it to Me and the Bees and we actually experienced a lot of growth because of that. And just that decision itself was pretty hard. And the process of changing the name of the whole business was hard as well. Wow. Michaela, we're going to transition in just a moment and we're going to talk about your book. But would you mind for a moment just giving just our students, our listeners and watchers, uh, just an idea of the scale right now of, of, of um, your business? Okay. So currently the product is in over 1500 1500 stores around the country in i believe it's 40 states currently and we are rolling out into around almost 300 more in march wow. so it we're going to be and uh, we're in 2000 stores around the country uh, we have four flavors as of last month we have sold two million bottles of lemonade and um, we also are part of the nonprofit so that I can actually help save the bees through research and education. So instead of just donating to other nonprofits, I started my own so I can go do workshops and go do projects and like turn regular land into beef and land. So I think I also think that's part of the big impact in the size of the company today. That is so cool. That is, I, I love, and it's, you see the dream, right? It's like unfolding and unfurling. And it's so neat that you even had the vision back then of, you know, the name change, because sometimes we can get really connected because that essentially, I mean, it's yours. Like it really does feel like it's yours. Um, but to have the vision of like, okay, I know I'm going to want to expand this one day and this is going to be beyond just even lemonade um, is such a great, such a great way to think about it. Um, and part of that is a release of a book called Be Fearless and a way to, to educate and share um, about entrepreneurship. But we wanted to ask you, you know, like, what was on your heart when you wanted to write this book? And what do you hope a reader gets out of it? Uh, I think what was on my heart was realizing, like, I, I taught at workshops and I was, um, I was just kind of going there, figuring out what kind of problems you guys want to solve could a business be a good way to help solve that? And here's how you can actually start. Here's my story of starting. You're never too young to. And I think by realizing, hey, like I, I'm still a student and I can't accept all these speaking requests, but I'm looking out and seeing how many kids have awesome ideas or are trying to solve problems that I wasn't aware about. And 
I think it would be really cool if they could find a way to start those ideas and those organizations, then that would be so, so helpful. And so the book was pretty much, do I want to do a picture book, a comic book, a memoir? How do I want to, how do I want to kind of share that, share my story, and also share how other kids can turn their ideas into an actual business? Or even adults, how they adults can dream like kids and um, use their kid mentality when it comes to business. And so that was like my motivation for writing it. And I definitely had to rely on that motivation because it was a long process of editing and finding pictures and figuring out what to keep in and what to put out. But honestly, I'm really, really happy with the final product. And I have heard great things from other people who have read it, started their ideas or even the folks who also read it. Michaela, it is a beautiful segue into into your book. I'm I'm holding on to it right now in my hands. It is a it is a beautiful piece of work. I love I love your storytelling. Number one, the the picture you paint uh, in the beginning of the book in your intro. But I really could see it at LoveWorks. We have uh, two kid businesses ourselves that our middle school students uh, had started, and this is a, this is going to be a I don't like the word required, but this is going to be a required reading because I really think that this could serve as a manual and a resource for them. And of course, anybody just to be just inspired you know, in their leadership journey. I don't want to give too much of the book away, but uh, we we talked earlier, you know, just about even this time of year for some people can be can be challenging and for a lot of reasons. And even some that may have already given up on just that excitement they had in the beginning of a, of a brand new year you know they're already discouraged you know that new year's resolution you know seems like it, you know it's a, it's an impossibility so if you wouldn't mind i'd love for you to talk about one of your chapters and you call it the beehive mentality can you talk with us today about what that means and how that could help our students today yeah so i think there's a couple of different references to beehives. I want to make sure that I'm talking about the right one. Are you talking about how there was one where it's just so important to ask for help when you need it because you're always going to have hope like at the hive. And uh, is, that, is, that, is that the one that you're talking that's, about? That's it. And you're talking about the mindset, yeah, and the help and the people around us, yes. Yes, I, th I think collaboration is so important when you're trying to turn your dreams into something that you can actually do. Right. And I was learning that even by inviting my friends from school to come help me at my stand or having my teacher help me review percentages so I could get ready for Shark Tank, those were so important. And I realized that through those actions, I was making a hive. So if there's something you want to learn or if there's questions that you have or a challenge that you're facing and you don't think, like you're enough or you're ready to face it alone, then you can rely on the people in your hive or you can build a hive, whether it's parents or teachers or friends at school. I found that so, so important. So as you help you need it, there's always a like at the hive. And overall, that's a collaborative mindset. I like to call have, having a hive mindset. Even at me and these, I call the people who are helping me like grow this passion and this is of mine. I call them like hive, and there's like the chief worker bee, there's chief marketing bee, um, chief finance bee, et cetera. So we all have bee titles and we're all kind of part of the hive. Absolutely, love that. So so powerful, practical. Uh, you know, we want to encourage anyone that's listening and watching this uh, to, to check out Amazon local bookstore. You're definitely not going to be disappointed. And I love you talk about the purpose of the book you know, that anyone, regardless of their age, can make a positive impact and to change the world. And thank you for believing that and inspiring so many people through your business and through this book. Michaela, would you mind letting us in on anything right now that you're excited about? Is there a, is there a big dream that's, that's in the works that you're able to, to talk about today? Oh, bummer. Hey, Michaela, heads up. Your mic's off. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so I think my first big dream or goal for right now is showing up fearlessly in 2021. Like, I think that's one that a lot of us share is just using what 
just how hard 2020 was and trying to apply that in 2021, whether it's the business, like um, me and the beast was hit pretty hard as well as so many other small businesses during 2020. So trying to use what we learned, whether it's e-commerce to grow the company or in school, realizing that what worked and what didn't work with online schooling and try to trying to be better and make sure that I'm all class on time for online school. And even just personally realizing that like I have to make time for hobbies and I have to make sure that I'm sleeping and doing that enough in in this year. And I think another one is high school and college. Like this is the year, junior year of high school is when I start applying to college. So I want to go to a college of my choice, the one that I enjoy. And I think another one is my driver's license. So if you guys are kids, you're probably like, oh, I don't have to worry about those for a while. But uh, there are things that I'm pretty excited about and are goals that I'm doing. That, those are really fun dreams, Michaela. I love that. Um, I I love asking this question, um, and it's it's one directed towards our middle school students. And uh, we like to ask our guests, you know, like what's a piece of advice you would give to your middle school self? I know you're not that far off from your middle school time, so I think you'll have some really really good crucial advice for them. <laughs> okay, piece of advice that I would give to my middle school self. The first one is. Trends come around, like trends come around. Things that are hobbies or things that you like right now and that make you happy right now that people could make fun of you for. I think that in a couple of years, those things will come around. I, I, I'm i just thinking about anime, for example. Like <laughs> you couldn't watch anime and now like people kind of just are accepted walking around with anime merch and things like that. And I think that just do whatever makes you happy right now. And if you stick with that, and if it does become a trend, or if the people who like laughed at you were like, why are you doing that? They may be the ones who also want to join later on. And so I think it's just, it's cool when you're one of the people who did it even when it wasn't popular and say true and authentic to yourself when it wasn't popular. So trends come around, do whatever makes you happy. And also like you can be the person that you believe yourself to be. That's another one. So start thinking of finding role models, finding people who you look up to, and or even like for me, sometimes it was characters and books, people who I thought were heroes or really cool or really smart, and I wanted to be like them. And so I was like, I, I believe that I can be like them. And um, like you are, find, just find a role model and try to resemble them, try to continue being like them. And eventually you'll grow and start thinking like them, whether it's being more creative or more smart. And I think that's a, a, a skill that is really helpful in middle school. In middle school. Ooh, that was such I, wisdom. I like that, Michaela. Caroline, that already sounds like a, that already sounds like a charge <laughs> that Michaela is yeah. giving us. So speaking of charges, Michaela, for this last part of our interview, we love to ask each guest to close us out with one minute burst of dreamer and doer inspiration. So this 60 seconds is going to go out to encourage the dreamers and the doers that are listening out there. Michaela, are you ready? I have a little uh, have a little, some little cards that I love reading when I want to crush my goals. Is, is it okay if I go get that or should I just, just do it off the spot? Your call, Michaela. Go for it. Okay, I'll be back. <laughs> this is awesome. So, so Carolyn, let's already maybe give just even a, 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 a playback here. What If there's one part right now of the interview that sticks out to you, we normally recap this at the end, what's one thing that, that sticks out? So I would say for me personally, it would be the hive mentality. And yeah. I think for myself, I have a hard time asking for help. Um, and I feel like sometimes I have to know everything or figure things out on my own. And that's not the case. Or, And I, it's also that people are willing to help. I think that's where the fear comes in is that I think people will reject or be like, I'm not going to help you. Um, but it's like people are a lot nicer than I guess they are in my head. Um, but I, I love that idea. And it's like go, when you're especially when you're trying to start something off and something new, like those uh, the right people can make all the difference. Ooh, that's that's good. This is great. This is great stuff. So we're going to turn the tail back over to you again. We call this the the sixty seconds of dreamer and doer inspiration. So for you to encourage, motivate, inspire, challenge our dreamers and doers that are watching and listening. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. Set and go. 
There's going to be a lot of B puns in this one. Okay, so be strong, be fearless, be beautiful, be kind, and believe that anything is possible when you have the right hive there to support you. You're enough just as you are. You have what you need to get started. So be bold and envision yourself living the life or doing something that you absolutely love. And I think this one's the last one. You may be afraid, but do it anyways. Don't wait, don't prepare, but begin because there's so much learning to be done in uncomfort and also in failure. Like you can learn so much from your failure and out of that you can be successful. So when you're faced with a challenge or a goal that you wanna meet, continue to be bold and work towards it. And um, that's it. Boom. Wow. I, I, for one, I appreciate all the B puns. Um, <laughs> I, I love that wisdom. And especially, man, that, that just do it anyway, even if you're afraid. Um, that's big. I, mean, I think that's the culmination of you and your story, the bees, right? Like do it anyway, even if you're afraid. Yes. Wow. Super cool. Well, Michaela, thank you for sharing your story with us today. We're actually going to give you a quick break um, and we're going to recap your episode uh, with mine and Michael's biggest takeaways. And so listeners, you're out there right now. Now is the time to drop your questions in the chat for Michaela. We're going to bring her back for some Q&A in just a moment. So thanks, Michaela. Thank you. Okay, Michael, what were, what were some of your biggest takeaways? Where do I where do I even start? I know it was recently said, so I hope this is fair. Uh, but I thought it was so great when she just reminded us, reminds me to do whatever that makes you happy. I'm gonna insert a word. She didn't say haters, but if there happen to be haters or those maybe that just aren't in favor, I think what's so so true, and it just just trust her, trust us on this that eventually, most likely, those people are gonna eventually come around in some way, shape, or form, and most likely are gonna probably become your biggest fans or end up buying your book. <laughs> it's so true. That is so cool. No, I love what she said of just like trends, they come and they will also go. And so like, just do what you love. I think a lot of times, um, and I know I, I've seen this in my middle school self, even my adult self, I get really like conscious about what people think about what I wear or the things that I've watched, the things I talk about, even the things that I eat. And it's like the, I love what she says, the trends come, they go, you'll be in fashion whether you, before you know it. <laughs> it's true. So good. Well, Carolyn, I see questions already coming in. So let's bring Michaela back. And I think let's get started if we could with our first question. Michaela, we we're talking about this earlier on our website, loveworksleadership.org. There is a there's a chat box that uh, that someone could just click on and ask our special dreamer and doer guest a question. So Michaela, if you're okay, we're gonna start with our first question from our website. Hello, my Hello. name is Baylor Collins. I am 13 years old, and my dream is to become a musician. My question for Michaela is, what would you say to other people who want to turn their fears into a business idea? Okay. Ready to answer? You ready. So I think my recommendation for turning your fears into a business idea is one, to learn about them. A lot of the times when you can learn and understand your fears, then it kind of makes it a little bit smaller. And that's what my experience was with the bees. I was afraid of the bees, but I ended up learning, hey, we need the bees to eat. And also bees only sting when they're about to die. So they only sting for self-defense. So I really don't have that much to be afraid of. And then the second thing I would say is once you can better understand your fear, try to figure out what fears or what problems others may face around you. If you can find a way to solve it, whether it's with a service or product, solve that problem or solve that fear or help other people be more fearless, um, I think you're realizing that there's a need and that means a potential demand or people to sell your product to. So it's, I think it's kind of the same with problems or fears or something that can be approved. Keep your eyes out, ask people for things, not only things that are good, that are going great, but also things that they wish they could change. Or whether it's as simple as like brushing your hair or wanting more of this kind of music, ask those questions and figure out, is there anything in common? And could I be the person to help solve that? 
Very, very cool. I man, I, I need. I'm gonna return back to this and start taking notes because I should have been writing notes all this time. Um, <laughs> I'm recording this. That's good. <laughs> yes, I'm good this. That's what I say in class. Right. <laughs> Well, we've got some. We've got quite a few questions in here. Um, how about this? We'll do an easy one, or hopefully an easy one. This one's from uh, Naya. She asks, "What's your favorite flavor of your lemonade?" I think my favorite flavor. It actually changes. I love the ginger in the morning, like when I can't wake up, and I love the ginger as a hot tea. And we have a recipe on like how you can add a couple spices to the ginger, make it a hot tea. So I love that one in winter. I love the prickly pear in the Honestly, I love it all the time, but I really love it as a popsicle and in the summer. And I think just mint is good all around. But my favorite one is probably the iced tea because it reminds me of my grandparents. And they're from South Carolina, South and North Carolina. They drink a lot of iced tea. So I really love the iced tea flavor. Or it's half and name. That's a that's a brilliant answer. It's like you've been asked that question before. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it really does change. Sometimes I remember yeah. the recipes. We're coming up with new recipes right now. But yeah, people ask me my favorite recipe. For the most part, it's iced tea or my favorite flavor. Well, they are all good. I'm just not saying that. I'm holding right now onto a bottle of prickly pear and I'm holding onto a bottle of lemonade with mint. And I'm going to, tr I'm going to drink them both uh, in just a few minutes after this podcast. We have another question, Michaela. We know you have been on many stages and that's where this one, many stages speaking that is. And that's where this question comes from, from Corey, who's part of a startup business herself. And uh, she or her team is getting ready for a big pitch and wants to know if you have any advice that will help them on stage. Hmm. Okay, so this one's an obvious one, but I, I, I can't be stressed enough. Make sure that you believe in whatever product you're doing. So honestly, you have to convince yourself just like you're convincing the people you're talking in front of. And I think when you come pitching an idea or a product that you really love, you're the best person to know about it. Like I'm the best person who knows my business because I started it. You guys are the best person to pitch your company, especially if you really love it. So convince yourself as long as, as well as convincing the people you're pitching in front of, research your audience, find out what their age range is, what are their interests, if it's specific people like the sharks, um, like if they have any allergies. Miss Lori Grenier was allergic to citrus and we didn't re research this beforehand. And so she did to invest in a product that she couldn't take. So don't make the same mistake, but make sure you research the people you are going to be talking to just to learn learn about them and how you can cater towards them. Um, and then I, I do think that it's always good to stress the problem that you're trying to fix or the need for it. So that's all. Good luck. Oh, that's good. Okay, I think We've got another one here uh, and she asks, this is from Ella. She says, who is one person or resource, this is, we love resources, who has helped inspire you to grow your business? Hmm, one person or resource. Uh, I think, so let me look at this. Uh, one is the, what's it called? How, I built this or how I built Oh yeah. It. Yeah. That was really my guy cool. Ross. Yeah. yeah. When you see huge companies, when you see huge companies that started in their basement or out of a school dorm and realizing that like they started really small too, I think that is very inspiring to keep on growing. Um and I'm also inspired by the people who mentor me or answer my questions because it's it's just realizing that not only are they growing their companies or like not only are they doing great, but they're also helping mentor the next generation or the people younger than them or the people who are trying to get up there too. That is very inspiring. And I think whenever you can, asking questions and showing people that you want to learn is a really cool way to not only learn something, but help keep on building that hive. But so that's a little bit off topic. Probably listening to that podcast and yeah that's good guy Roz podcast and book carolyn i know that we have more questions and we have time Ooh, for can i add one more We're also, researching your competition like knowing your competition that's a good one that's a good one. 
That's good. Carolyn, I'm going to leave you with the hard decision to pick the last one. So I'm going to pick this next one. <laughs> you mentioned, you mentioned Michaela earlier, finding just your headspace and, and, and thinking of ideas and listening to music. So that's where this question comes from. And they're curious about your favorite genre of music. Hi, that's an interesting question and a good one. I don't have a favorite genre. So I think it would be kind of just uh, like, alt or indie i don't really know what it's called but <laughs> just overall good music i love like old school r&b from my parents and just listening to that but i also listen to a lot of lo-fi when i'm doing work and then i just like finding different artists i think most of my artists the artists that i listen to are lesser known so they're smaller artists but their music is still great so probably that alt indie sometimes rock Okay. I'm Great. in the same in the same genre as you, I think. <laughs> kind of hard to know. This is a hard one, um, definitely to pick the last question because there's a lot of them. Uh, but I'll I'll finish off in this one because we we've talked about failure a little bit earlier, but I think this is a good one because it's true. Um, so Bar this is from Baruch. He says, as a young entrepreneur and a leader, what advice do you have for fa failure? I believe this is something we're all scared of at a young age. Hmm. Okay, so what advice do you have? I What advice would I have for preventing failure is thinking of all the different possible outcomes. And sometimes, like, the worst possible thing that can happen is no. But when it's a big failure, you want to think of all the possible reasons why that could happen and try to prepare for each of those. If it's something that you, um, what's it called? you have already failed on, I would say waste no time in getting started with the next thing. Like if it's something that you, if you have another idea or something else that you wanna get started and the other one didn't work and you're having a hard time, like just getting that one to work, I would say try as many different things as you can and figure out what hit off. Me, Lemonade was not the first idea that I had. I tried painting, paint, painted rocks. I tried selling uh, like wildflowers in Play-Doh. And those didn't work. And also, I want to say that at the business fairs, I never won for me and these a single year. That could be considered a failure, um, just not winning any prizes or any awards. So I think trying to figure out, like, okay, I failed, but is it something where I can recover and keep on growing? Or is it something where I should try like, and get started with the next thing? So good, Michaela. Thank you for just your time today. Before we let you go, um, could you just tell our listeners and our, our dreamers and doers out there, you know, where can we find you? And also to what would it mean a lot to you um, that we could get behind and we can support? Okay, so I think the first one is the first one is where to find me, um, me and the bees dot com. That's like the website that has all the recipes and my products and also about the book where you can find the book. It also has a business workbook. So it's a literal business plan guide. It talks about how you can come up with an idea, how like walks you through marketing for that idea and building a bunch of things like that. So that's also on me and the Um and then I think something that that you guys want to do as an audience, and I think you may already be planning on um, with these amazing people who keep on rooting for this book is by getting the book, reading it, and like writing a review. Because launching a book during COVID with where you can't do um, book talks and in person, or you can't do book signings, um, it's, it's definitely pretty hard, especially getting that out there. So if you like the book, recommending it to someone else and just reading it and letting, letting us know what you think or what you started because of it. Mm -hmm. So, so good. Well, we're gonna get behind I love, I love trying the product and that's at, the where to buy is also there. I love to know what you guys think of the product and your new, and new flavor ideas. Well, we have some five-star reviews that are going to be coming your way because it is five-star product. It's a five-star book. Just not saying this to say this, but Michaela brought so much joy in mornings where I have three kiddos. My oldest is eight years old, and she read your book from cover to cover, and it brought so much joy uh, that she was being just inspired by your words, your story, your journey, going after big dreams. And thanks for doing that today on the podcast. It's been awesome. Thanks for making us better. 
I'm so happy to hear that. Thank you for being amazing hosts, mm -hmm. asking great thought provoking questions. And thank you audience for also asking questions and being so interactive. I love seeing your ideas. Michaela, we'll see you soon. Bye. You're welcome. Bye, Michaela. Carolyn, dreamers and doers, we hope you were as encouraged as we were during this conversation with Michaela. So, so good. We always like to remind you about the following week and to mark your calendars. Do we mark our calendars, Carolyn, or do we check our phones? Or what do we do? We enter in something in our phones, right? Is that what we do? Yeah, pretty much. It, there's got to be like coding involved now and stuff. So. All right. Well, it's going to be coming up where we have another conversation coming up uh, in a couple of weeks. Uh, with dreamer and doer Bob Okello. And he is the founder and he's the CEO of Mara Basasa, be who believes in bringing in the best in every, bring out the best in every learner, uh, where his organization facilitates access to life changing learning opportunities that empower the learner to be their best self in a fastly changing technological era. Uh, they are committed to leading a new education revolution in Africa. So that's where he's going to be calling in from. He's going to be calling in from Africa, where they empower every learner to achieve their greatest potential. That kind of sounds like what we believe in, Carolyn. So definitely tune in for Bob. It's going to be awesome. For sure. That was good pronunciation too, Michael. Wow. <laughs> I did my best. <laughs> Well, just a reminder, you can visit loveworksleadership.org and you can learn more about us, our organization, our student businesses, and also all of our digital resources are also available on there. And so we'd love for you to check it out. Hey, our contact information is on there too. So if we hear from you, hey, we will definitely respond. So <laughs> cell phones are out there. Text us, ping us. We would love to have a conversation with you. Remember everybody that real leaders, they don't blend in, but they stand out. Dream big. And do your dream.